This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to look at the Law of Signs, specifically looking at something called the Ambiguous Case. The Ambiguous Case will be discussed in the first section, and then in the following four sections, we'll look at problems. All right, let's get started. Let's start by talking about what the ambiguous case is. The ambiguous case exists when we're given a triangle and we're given an angle of a triangle and then the lengths of two sides of a triangle. And the angle cannot be the angle that's between the two sides. That's why we write it as side-side angle. The angle is written last. It's not written in between the two sides, which would be side-angle side. Okay. What does that look like? So let's take a look at a picture and we'll be able to figure out a little bit better what this means. Okay, let's take a look at a picture. As you can see from this diagram, angle A has been drawn. You could also see that side C, which is next to the angle, is drawn as well. So let's say we're given another side, which of course would be little a. So we've got to have two sides in an angle for side-side angle. So let's say we have the length little a. We know how long it is. We want to figure out how many triangles can I draw with this given information. In order to do this, you first have to figure out what the height of this triangle is. So let's say we drop a segment and we call that segment that's dropped down at a perpendicular, we'll call that the height of the triangle. It would look like this. Okay, so once we calculate this length, this height, which is pretty easy to do, which we'll do in the examples that follow, we now have to compare little a, that side a, we have to compare to this height. So if little a is too small, it'll never reach the opposite side. If a is somehow larger than H, but smaller than C, then we've got a situation. What it could do, if we swing the segment just to the left, we can make one triangle. If we swing A to the right, we can make another triangle. So when little a is larger than H, but smaller than C, you can make two triangles. Okay, let's talk about the last case. The last case is, what if little a is a, it could be as long as c or larger. So if it's equal to c or larger, we're only going to be able to make one triangle because I'm gonna to have to swing a to the right and now it makes a fairly large triangle. Okay, so you could see that depending on how large little a is, depends on how many triangles, if we could draw any triangles at all. Okay, so I'm gonna show how to calculate using this logic of the ambiguous case in the next four problems. Before we jump into our first problem, let it be known that MathGuide.com has a table like this uh, in its Law of Signs section. And um, when you're going to do a problem related to it, I would recommend that you have this printed out and placed before you and it'll make your problem solving go that much uh, faster. So uh, this kind of tells you all the different cases that are available and I'm going to be running through this logic every time I do a problem. Okay, so that's what I'll be referring to. Okay, let's jump into the first one. For our first problem, we're going to have a C value that's equal to 20. So that's a length of our side. Let's say that our angle, A, is 35 degrees. And then let's say we're given little a, which I'll write over here. Little a, which is not yet drawn in our diagram, is equal to 10. So the first thing you want to do is figure out what is the height of the triangle. Now I already have that written in red, 
so I just need to figure out what that length is. Okay, so how do you do this? Well, this is right triangle trig, so you're going to take the sine of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is the height, over the hypotenuse, which is 20. Okay, so of course you've, you remember this from right triangle trig, you cross multiply, so you're going to get h is equal to 20 sine 35, and h turns out to be 11.47. Okay, so now you go through this logic. You would say, well, is a at least as large as the height? And you go, no. So it's impossible. It's impossible for side A to ever meet the opposite side of this triangle. It's, it's not going to meet it. It cannot form a triangle. There are zero possible triangles that we can make with this scenario. That's it. Let's go on to the next one. All right, here's problem number two. Let's say we're given the length C is 76. Let's say the angle is 30. And let's say that little a is equal to 38. Okay, so what do you do first? Again, you first figure out how tall is the triangle. That's the height. So I'm going to take the sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite h over hypotenuse 76. Again, I cross multiply, and I'm going to get h is equal to 76 sine of 30. Okay, so h turns out to be approximately, nope, h turns out to be exactly 38. Okay, now you do this logic where you start to compare lengths. You'd say, okay, let's compare that length A with the height. Well, you can see that length A is exactly the height of our triangle. Since A matches exactly the height of the triangle, I can make one triangle here. As you can see, the triangle will be right there, and it's a right triangle. Okay, let's move on to another problem. All right, let's start problem three. And let's say we're given C is 19. Let's say that we have our A value is 15. All right, so the first thing you want to do is figure out what's the height of the triangle. So you'd say <coughs> the sine, oh, and I guess we have to be given an angle here too. So the angle is 43 degrees. There you go. That's all our given information, our side side angle. Okay, so we're going to take the sine of 43 degrees and we're equal to the height, which is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is 19. We're going to cross multiply, so we get h equals 19 sine of 43. Okay, so we throw this in a calculator, and out comes a height of 12.96. Okay, so now we run through this logic where we start to compare lengths. We say that, okay, here's side A, that's 15. Well, it's greater than the height, and that's good news because now that means it creates at least one triangle, maybe two. All right, now let's see, is it one or two triangles? Since a is smaller than side C, it's smaller than 19, that means I can make two triangles. I can make a triangle where A bends to the left of our height, that's one triangle, or I can make A bend to the right of H, and then it'll form another triangle. So you could see there's two possible triangles we can make for this scenario. All right, let's go on. One more problem to go. For our fourth problem, we're going to have angle A be 50 degrees. We're going to have side C is 8. And we know the side opposite, our given angle, little a, is going to be 9. 
Okay, so when we do this problem, of course, we're always going to figure out what the height of the triangle is. So let's take the sine of 50 degrees. And remember, sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So that's h over 8. We, of course, solve this proportion by cross multiplying. h times 1 is h. 8 times the sine of 50. We throw this into a calculator. And the calculator tells us that this, this is 6.13. All right, now you run through a little bit of logic. We start comparing sides. We'd say, well, since A is larger than H, yep, 9 is definitely larger than 6, it's long enough to meet the other side and to create a triangle. Okay, so now we have to figure out, will this make one triangle or will this make two triangles? Okay, well, since A is greater than C, so if A is ever equal or greater than C, we know the only way I could place side A is bending it to the right to create a very large triangle. And that's it. Only one triangle can be formed with this given information. This has been MathGuide.com. Make sure you go back to the website to check out our interactive quizzes, our instructional videos, and text-based lessons. Take care.